influenced by finances, investing, estate, and retirement planning? Well, I went to school so you don't have to. Welcome to Finances and with Kathy and Jennifer. Welcome to Finances and Payday Loans. I'm Jennifer and I'm here with Kathy. Today we'll cover why someone might get a payday loan, the danger of not being able to pay it back on time, the huge fee you're going to pay by taking out one of these loans, and some alternatives to payday loans. What is a payday loan? They may also be called cash advances, deferred deposit, deferred presentment, or credit access business. They are a way that someone who needs cash quickly can get an unsecured loan for a short period of time. Unsecured means that you don't need to have collateral, like a car, that you offer to give if you don't make payments. So some might consider one of these loans if they find that they have small, unexpected expenses. You could apply for a loan for, say, fifty to a thousand dollars, but generally these loans are about three to four hundred dollars, and you can do this very quickly. They will need to know that you have a job, hence the name payday loan, and that you'll be able to repay it within two weeks or if your job is monthly within that month. Your paycheck is going to determine how much you qualify for. So you can't just walk in and say, oh, you give loans for a thousand. I would like a thousand dollar loan. They're going to base it on a percentage of how much money you make in a pay period. You can apply online or go into the store where they'll determine the amount you're going to be able to borrow. In store, you can take the money. Well, if you apply online, it will probably take 24 hours to get the funds. Once you receive your money, you will need to repay it with your next paycheck, two weeks to one month, and you will owe a steep fee in the form of interest. Interest is the amount that you're going to pay for borrowing this money. The APR or annual percentage rate includes the interest you'll owe plus all of the fees included in it versus if you hear what the interest rate is. So you want to find out what the APR will be for this, even though you're not paying it annually. You want to know what are all the fees that would be involved in borrowing this money. These loans will charge you a ridiculously high interest rate. Current credit cards will charge you anywhere between 15, if you're lucky, to 29% if you don't pay off your balance. A payday loan will charge you, say, a simple 15% in interest. But since it's due in only 14 days, that 15% is actually equal to 400% over the course of a year. Some of the loans we found actually charge you a rate of 1,900% annually to take out their loans. So if you borrow $300, you may pay $60 or more in only two weeks for a total of $360. So again, if you don't have a lot of money and you're borrowing $300 and two weeks from now, you're going to have to pay back $360, that's a, a hard sell. We found some stories of examples of people taking these loans. And one example was a young woman took a loan and was forced to roll it over several times. Then the original loan was due, but she could not afford to pay it. So she took another loan from another lender to cover the first. Sadly, in an attempt to make good on all her bills, she ended up with six of these loans. Ultimately, she owed $600 a month on fees and she was evicted and her car was repossessed. And that $600 a month in fees doesn't include the amount she actually owes for the loan. She's just paying that $600 in fees. Whatever her original loan that she owes is still accruing interest and fees at a rate of possibly a 400% if it's taking her over a year to pay this. These are very scary loans. Yeah. If you take one of these loans, you can repay it in a number of ways, including writing a check from your personal checking account that you post date to the due date to pay the loan, a check on your next payday. You can pay online on their website. Your bank could provide a direct deposit or you could use a credit card or other credit to pay it. Sadly, 20% can't be repaid and 80% are rolled over into another loan or are reborrowed within another 30 days. Just like that lady you were just talking about. Yeah. So if you go, you're gonna need to bring with you your driver's license, your social security number, a current pay stub, because again, this is what they're basing this loan off of, and a check from that checking account, because more than likely they're going to ask for a post-dated check for repayment. All of these are dependent on the state that you live in. Only 36 states allow these payday loans because they are so detrimental to the person's ability to get out of debt. 
The reason some states don't offer it is not that the state doesn't offer it. It's that when a state sets the limit on the amount that someone can charge these lenders on the interest, then the lenders don't want to be in that state. They're not going to be able to make enough money to actually offer loans because they're they're making all of their money on the interest on these loans. Some companies even offer a rollover loan, which would allow the borrower to roll over or repay for another loan. But that just means that your fees are doubling. And the reality is they're hoping that you're going to do this. Those who serve our country in the military are given special protection from these loans. The Military Lending Act limits the military APR to 36 percent, as well as a larger range of credit products. They can acquire payday loans, vehicle loans, title loans, refund application loans, installment loans, and unsecured open-end lines of credit. How is your credit affected by all of this? Your credit can be negatively affected if you do not repay or are even delinquent on your loan. They will not check your credit score to see if they're going to approve you for a payday loan. They're just going to look at your paycheck to see what amount, what percentage they're willing to give you based on it. But the minute you do take that loan, it will show up on your credit report as a loan that is out as part of a percentage of how much you have against you. They don't report any on-time payments. So this loan does not help you build credit. The only possible thing that can happen with your credit is it can damage it. I used a calculator on NerdWallet, and I just typed in that I wanted to borrow $300 and typed in a $15 dollars in fees randomly. And it said I would pay it back in 15 days. And then I did it again and said I would pay it back in 30 days. The monthly rate on that 15 days came to 121% annually. In other words, if I took the whole year, I would have to pay 121% on that $300, which is another 300 plus dollars in interest. And for the monthly payback, it came out to only 60% if I took a whole year to pay it. But 60%. Again, that's more than half of that 300. So it's another additional 150 in interest and loans. Another story that we found was a a woman said, as soon as you get your first loan, you're trapped unless you know where you're going to get that extra $300 in two weeks. And the reality is you probably were living pay to check to paycheck. And so there's not actually money available for to be able to pay back that payday loan. In a Pew survey, they found that more than 12 million Americans use these loans. What are the alternatives to taking out a payday loan? If you're going to end up with so much interest and fees, it's not something that is recommended. So what can you do instead? In that same survey, they found that 81% of people said that they could reduce their expenses instead. 62% said that they could delay paying some bills. 57% said that they could borrow from family or friends. 44% could get a bank or credit union loan, 37% could use a credit card, and 17% could actually borrow from their employer. So borrow from your employer. As it turns out, sometimes a small company where you really know who the owner is, is willing to lend you money, but also very large companies will often have something available where you can borrow against your upcoming paycheck. And what they'll do is they will lend you money So that, again, same thing as this payday loan, you're going to have to pay them back, but there may or may not be uh, any interest or a great deal of interest with it. So you could contact your HR department to see if that's an option for you. You can also check with local nonprofits to see that if they can help you with paying for or providing, say, groceries or transportation money, because that might be what will be enough to help get you through to your next paycheck without taking out one of these loans. For medical expenses, you could contact the billing department if you have past bills that you're paying and just let them know that you're going to have to hold off on paying them. Even if you've already had to hold off on paying them, it's still worth the call to try and negotiate delayed payment or a payment plan than taking out one of these loans. If you belong to a credit union, some will offer loans with similar terms as payday loans, but they'll max out that interest rate at 28%. And they might even give you a few months to pay versus a few weeks to pay. There are loans available for those who have FICO scores of less than 690. If you qualify, this type of loan doesn't hurt your credit score, and you actually get a number of offers and compare the loans. Sadly, there have been many of these loans taken out during COVID-19, and they are a bit harder to find. You can make money by selling things, or you could get a second job like Uber that you can do on your own time. We're going to caution you, though, on finding a job where you have to get some kind of an inventory and sell that inventory, right? So any of the home 
market kind of things. You're not looking to spend your money right now. Ways that you can just literally make money. You may hate to ask, but it's possible that you could borrow from family or friends as well. And if it's a small enough amount and it's not a recurring request, then you may find that to be a good alternative. You also could bring items of value to a pawn shop. This is where they lend you money against the value of the item that you're pawning with them. They'll offer you an amount to actually buy it outright. And they'll also let you know what percent that you would owe if you want to borrow money from them and then you want to buy it back. And you have to buy it back within the month. They too charge a fairly high interest rate, but they are for 30 days versus possibly two weeks. And that just means that if you have a $200 loan that you're taking out, you've pawned something, they gave you $200. If it's a 25% interest rate, you're going to owe an additional $50 that month. So when you go to buy it back, it's not 200, but it's $250. It does not cover a whole year like a credit card does. So if you were to actually take money out of a credit card and they said that you owed 25%, that $50 would be divided by 12 for only $4 a month in interest versus at the pawn shop where it would be $50 a month in interest, a big difference. But beware, if you do not repay that loan on time within the month, they will sell it. And 85% of the people do go back in time to purchase what they've pawned, but another 15% are going to lose that item. And if it's something you don't care about, you know, a ring or something that is not of great value to you and you can't get it back, oh, well. But if it's something that, you know, that was very important to you and you're worried about losing it, that might not be the thing to pawn. When you need money in an emergency, your options become very small. So do your best to start an emergency fund, even with small amounts added. That way, if you do end up in a situation where you need money in an emergency, you can start with that fund. Anything else? That's all. Thanks for listening to Finances and Payday Loans. We know you chose to listen and we're grateful. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share and consider leaving a review because it helps bring financial education to others and lets them find us more easily. Please let us know what questions you'd like answered by going to our website at financesand.net. You can now find infographics on these topics here in the show notes and at our website. Finances and does not provide tax or legal advice and nothing in this podcast can be construed as such. Always consult a tax, accounting, or a legal professional for advice on your specific situation. Remember, I went to school so you don't have to. That's cool. I'd rather have you redo it and be cool with it. That's good.